Hello! I am making a video about speech recognition in the browser using the P5 speech library. So first, another thank you to the NYU Ability Project at the uh, Integrated Digital Media Program at Tandon School for Engineering and Luke Dubois who created this library. I've been using it, I've made a lot of mistakes with it, but I'm excited about it. Um, and what I'm gonna show you in this video is how to do speech recognition. Now one thing I should say is there's some privacy concerns here anytime you're going to use the microphone in the browser. So if you write the code that I'm going to write, the browser will ask for permission to use the microphone. You should also note that the audio that the browser is recording gets uploaded to the cloud, and that's where the actual speech recognition happens, not locally on your machine itself. It's the Google speech recognition stuff in the cloud. So if you're connected to the internet, if you're not connected to the internet, none of this will work. Okay, so let's get started and see how we can write some code that does this. Um, I've got a sketch with nothing in it, <laughs> so I'm gonna add setup. I am going to add a no canvas. And let me mention again that I already have included in my HTML file the p5.speech.js library, which you need to go download yourself from the GitHub repository that's linked to in this video's description. Once you've done that, you can then write some code that says, let a speech recognizer, or let's just say speech rec equal new p5.speech rec, okay? Um, now, I can give, I can do a couple things here. I can give it a language because, um, and I believe this is the default for US English. So I can, I, if I don't give it any arguments, it'll set some default settings. And I can also give it a callback like got speech. So when I create the recorder, what I'm saying is I want you to listen for this language. Um, and I'll, I'll post a link to where you can see all the documented language possibilities there. And actually, Alka, <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, one thing I can do which is exciting is I could say navigator dot language. So let's actually write this as a separate line of code. Code navigator dot language or enus. So in other words, if the browser, this, this would just pick up whatever, um, this is a way of asking P5 speech re recognition to just use whatever the sort of language is set of the browser already. Aha! <laughs> okay, then once I have this, I can write this got speech callback. Um, and what I'm going to do now in the got speech callback is I'm just going to say console.log uh, speech rec. So what I want to do is run this code. It's going to listen uh, to the microphone. And then anytime it hears something, oh, I, you know, I forgot something really important. <laughs> I have to say speech rec.start. There's a few more things I'm going to do with this. But this is start listening, which is important. You have to explicitly say start listening. Okay, so let's see what happens. Refresh. Oh, navigation is not defined because it's navigator. First, you can see this red blinking microphone. Now, because I've been doing this for a while on this computer before I started recording this video, it didn't ask me for permission. It already had permission. Um, and, it might also be because I'm doing it locally, but um, it, you will probably see that it'll ask you permission. Okay, wait, something console logged, it got some speech. Look at this, confidence level. So this is important, it gives you a confidence level of how confident it is that it got what you said correctly, 92%. And then you can see here, result string. First, you can see this red blinking microphone, not because I've been doing this for a while, because this is all the stuff that I said. And there's actually a lot more information as well in the object in the result JSON. So there's lots of stuff like a timestamp and more information that you could sort of dig into. You know, this is really, this P5 speech library is a thin layer on the web speech kit library. I'm probably saying that wrong, but on the, the web speech API. So really it's just a window into that. And once you're using this, you might discover you want to dig deeper into that. But what I could do right now is I could see what I really want is just what I said, which is result string. I can also look at, I think there's a result value true. This is kind of like, was it successful or not? So what I'm going to do is add to the code. If speech rec result value, was it successful or not? Then create P speech rec dot uh, result string. Okay, so there we go. And here, here comes. 
<laughs> Here we go. And refresh. Hello, speech recognizer. <laughs> there. Um, I should really should have said coding train or something. Let's try this again. Choo choo. Wait. <laughs> All right, I'm going to hit refresh and let's see what happens. Choo choo. Oh, wait, it said let's see what happens. Choo choo. All right, that was the greatest thing that's ever happened to me in my life with speech recognition. Awesome. Now, you'll notice something. It's not listening to me anymore. So by default, when you say start, it's only going to listen to one thing that you say. And this is good to have that by default because you don't want suddenly like, all of the audio that's ever coming into this computer to be uploaded to the cloud. Um, but you can turn on something called continuous mode. So I can say continuous equals true, and there's actually something else called interim results, which I'm going to set at false, and I'll show you what that is in a second. So I can say continuous, which I always spell wrong, and I can say comma interim, which I, I always spell wrong, not say wrong. I think I say continuous. So I'm going to turn on continuous mode. Let's see what happens. Oops. Interim is not defined. Oh, interim, I spelled interim. I did spell interim wrong. Ooh. All aboard. Choo choo. Chugga 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 choo choo. All right, anyway, you can see that this works. Sort of. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so one thing you might notice is that it waits for me to pause speaking before it gives me more data into the browser. This is what interim results. Now, the interim results is a little tricky to get to work. Um, and really, you've got to investigate how the web speech API works. But let me set this to true, and I'll show you what I mean. Hello, one, two, three, how is it going, four, five, six? So you can see here that it's continuously listening and just, it's continuously listening and giving me stuff. And so what's great, um, Luke in, in the examples in the actual P5 GitHub repository has an example where you can drive a little drawing thing around the screen. And so watch what, how this works. Up, up, down, down, right, right, down, up, down, up, down. So if you're listening continuously and you're listening for certain key words, you could control like a pen as it's drawing onto a canvas. I encourage you to try that as an exercise yourself or go, um, or go and uh, check out the example that does this. There's a lot of other great examples on the P5 speech um, GitHub repository itself. So thank you, Luke Dubois and the Ability Project and uh, everybody else at NYU who's worked on this library. It's really wonderful and fun to play with. I'm gonna do a coding challenge, uh, which I'll link to from this video where I uh, create one of my, a chat bot, but instead of typing with the chat bot and having it display text to me, I speak to the chat bot and it speaks back to me. So I'm going to use both speech recognition and text to speech. I like to say text to speech and speech to text. No, speech to text is a thing. No, no, no. Text to speech is a thing. Speech to text is speech, really called speech recognition, but whatever. You get the point. Enjoy. Have a good day.